Let's talk about something that almost no one talks about, but every woman deserves to understand. What happens to your skin down there as you age? Whether you've started to notice changes or you just wanna know what's normal, this video is for you. Vaginal aging is real, but it is nothing to be embarrassed about, and there are so many things you can do to make it better, so let's talk about it. I'm Dr. Sam Ellis and I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'm here to help you understand your skin and find products or sometimes even procedures that work for you. So if you like that type of content, make sure you're subscribed to the channel and you give this video a thumbs up. You may be wondering why a dermatologist is talking about vaginal aging. Like, shouldn't we just leave that to the gynecologist? But there's actually a ton of overlap between dermatology and gynecology. And when I was in medical school, I actually thought I was going to be an OBGYN and it was on my gynecology rotation that I did a vulvar dermatology rotation that was exclusively focused on skin issues that arise in that area. And that really piqued my interest in how dermatology can impact women's health, sometimes beyond what you can see. Now, before we get into how menopause affects vulvar and vaginal health, let's do a quick refresher on the anatomy because a lot of people understandably mix up the terms. So the term vulva refers to your external genitalia. That's going to be your lips, so your labia majora and your labia minora, as well as your clitoris and the entry to the vagina. Then you have the vagina, which is the internal muscular canal that leads to your uterus. And then you have the urethra, which is where urine exits your body. And that is a separate opening just above the vaginal opening. And many people refer to that entire area as the vagina, but that's just not the full picture. Each of these structures, the vulva, the vagina, the urethra, are estrogen responsive tissues. So when you have hormone shifts during menopause, all of these tissues can be negatively impacted. And this can lead to a constellation of symptoms called the genitourinary syndrome of menopause, or GSM for short. And this can significantly impact quality of life, sexual function, even relationships. And unlike hot flashes, which usually improve over time, GSM tends to get worse over time if you don't treat it. So what are some things you might notice that are part of GSM? And I'm sharing these because changes as you age are normal, and I want you to know that it's okay if you're experiencing these, and that you also can do things about it, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. One of the most common things people will experience is vaginal dryness and irritation. Estrogen helps stimulate collagen and blood flow to the vaginal tissues. So when you get a drop in estrogen, the vagina can become less elastic and have less natural lubrication. And the vaginal tissue there can also become much thinner, so that can lead to symptoms like itching or burning or painful sex. Another thing that happens is changes to the vaginal microbiome. So a healthy vaginal lining will secrete lactic acid, which helps maintain the vagina at a low pH, which protects against infections. And unfortunately, with less estrogen, and this balance can shift, which can lead to things like more vaginal infections or urinary tract infections. Another thing that's incredibly common is urinary symptoms. Because estrogen affects the urethra as well as the bladder, it's not uncommon to have things like urinary frequency where you go to the bathroom and then like 30 minutes later, you're like, wait, I just went, but I have to go again, as well as issues with bladder control. Now, a lot of people will experience vulvar changes that go beyond GSM. For example, a lot of women will notice that their labia become saggier or looser. And you also may notice that the clitoris actually starts to hang lower. Now, for some people, that's purely just going to be an aesthetic thing where they don't like how that looks. But for a lot of people, it becomes functional because that looser tissue causes unwanted friction and it can be really uncomfortable to go about your day-to-day -day life. The labia also can start to look a lot more pale and that's due to less collagen and less blood flow to the area over time. And it's also not uncommon to notice changes in your pubic hair. You may notice the pubic hair starts to thin out and become more gray. Actually, a lot of my older female patients will joke with me. They're like, you know, getting old kind of sucks, but it's kind of nice because I don't have to shave as often. And then the other thing that people may notice on their vulvar area are different types of growths. So there are things called angiokeratomas, which are little red to black bumps. You might see genital warts start to come up. Even if you had exposure to a sexual partner very early on in your life, sometimes those genital warts don't show up until much later in your life when your immune system is augmented. There are also other benign growths like seborrheic keratoses and something called melanotic macules, which are brown flat spots on the vulva. 
The other thing that can happen in the vaginal or vulvar area, and this is so important because I saw this all the time when I worked in that vulvar clinic and it was always so tragic, is you can get skin cancer on those tissues. And often because women are not regularly checking their anatomy, they don't know how long something has been there and things can progress really far before they're ever evaluated. So my advice to you is one, get familiar with your own genitalia take a mirror down there and learn your business. And number two, do not be embarrassed to get a new growth or a new spot evaluated. This is not the time to be modest. Now, I think for a long time, the conversation around menopause and changes you might see in the vulvar and vaginal area was just sort of like, hey, deal with it. This is a normal thing that happens. But even though these things are normal, it doesn't mean we have to suffer through them. And there are interventions you can take. First of all, let's just talk about like general care for that area. Your vagina is what we call a self cleaning machine. You do not need to put anything into your vagina to clean it out. It does it very well on its own. However, I do recommend cleaning the external genitalia, but you don't have to get fancy here. We want to use a gentle cleanser and warm water. I recommend cleansing that area during all ages and stages of life, starting in childhood and through your later years. But when you approach menopause and you start having symptoms in that area, that's when we start changing up how we take care of it. Number one, you can start introducing vaginal moisturizers. These are typically going to be hyaluronic acid based gels that you can use several times a week to maintain moisture in that area if you're having irritation or itchiness. And I'll link some of the recommended vaginal moisturizers in the description box. It's also so important that as the skin in the vagina and around the vulva starts to thin out, that you start considering adding sexual lubricants to your routine. Now you certainly don't have to be going through menopause to have lube in your sex life, but it is something that I would highly recommend if you're experiencing any type of discomfort with sex. And lubricant is really there to just mimic your body's natural secretions and make sex more comfortable and sometimes more fun. You can use ones that are water-based, oil-based, silicone-based, hyaluronic acid-based. There are a lot of options. Now, something you might not have heard of that I actually learned about from a gynecologist colleague when I was attending a conference and hearing her speak is something called the double glide technique. This involves applying an oil-based lube to the vulva, usually during foreplay, and then applying a water-based lube to a toy or to the sexual partner. And because oil and water repel each other, you get a lot of prolonged slipperiness. That's that double glide action. And I'll put some water and oil-based lubes that I often recommend in the description box. But also if you have an amazing lube, let us know in the comments. Don't gatekeep that. Now, if lube and vaginal moisturizers aren't enough, and for a lot of people going through menopause, they are not going to fully do the trick. That's where we get into prescription medications. Number one, being topical estrogen that you apply to the vulva and into the vagina. This can be in the form of a ring, a tablet, or a cream. And the reason this is so helpful is because you're putting estrogen directly on those estrogen deficient tissues. You're going straight to the source. This is going to help thicken the skin of the vulvar and vaginal tissues. It's going to help with lubrication and suppleness. And the great thing about vaginal estrogen is that you have minimal systemic absorption. And I would say among dermatologists and gynecologists, topical estrogen is going to be the most helpful with GSM symptoms. You can also get prescription arousal creams. Sometimes they're called scream creams, and that helps with blood flow to the area and of course is meant to increase sexual pleasure. Aside from topical things, there are also lifestyle things you can do to improve some of these symptoms. Number one is actually engaging in regular sexual activity or sexual stimulation. This is nothing to be embarrassed about, but it's a little bit of use it or lose it. And when you regularly stimulate that area, that's going to help with things like elasticity and blood flow. Also, I cannot recommend pelvic floor physical therapy more highly. I shared this on my Instagram, but it's actually something I even did before and after the birth of my son, just to help support and strengthen that area. It can also help with things like discomfort during sex and bladder control. And then lastly, of course, and I know this is easier said than done, but managing your stress and getting good sleep. When you have spikes in your cortisol, which is your stress hormone, that can lead to more vaginal and vulvar dryness, as well as difficulty with tissue healing. Lastly, there are some in-office interventions that you can consider. There are certain lasers and radio frequency devices that can help with GSM symptoms. Probably the two most popular devices are the Mona Lisa Touch and the Genevieve. And you also can consider things like surgical labioplasty if that looseness or sagging of the labia or areas around the clitoris is causing either aesthetic or functional problems for you. So vaginal and vulvar changes are part of the menopause journey, but suffering is not required. Gentle care, evidence-based treatments, professional guidance are all ways that you can maintain your comfort and your 
confidence during this part of your life. Let me know which part of the video you found the most interesting. Share this video with a friend who needs this. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more discussions on women's health. Thank you so much for being here. It's amazing to watch this community grow and I'll catch you next time.